now i would like to come to uh, the point where the autonomic innovation interacts with the uh, endocrine system and what impact does it have on the histopathological changes now in our past videos we have discussed that uh, the endocrine system develops gradually in steps so the first system to mature is the hypothalamic pituitary arc from there the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis uh, matures after that the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and then the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis and they have their own effects on the tissue and how they interact with the autonomic nervous system now considering that uh, hypothalamus is a place where uh, the autonomic origin takes place the signaling takes place and all the signals arise from the hypothalamus going downwards in a direction so the thyroid axis what it does is it produces the alpha adrenergic receptors in the tissues while the function of the B, no, adrenal axis is to convert those alpha adrenergic receptors into the beta adrenergic receptors as we see that uh, for example uh, when we give steroid to a patient there is increased neutrophilia and uh, we give uh, steroids for patients who have asthma so that uh, there are more beta adrenergic receptors which uh, respond to the uh, beta 2 adrenergic stimulation from salbutamol and other drugs and the uh, gonadal axis i would say the most important uh, function of the gonadal axis is that it keeps it kind of suppresses the adrenal and the thyroid axis to some extent so when the gonadal axis actually degenerates so, such as uh, during menopause the there's a increased signal from the hypothalamus which causes increased stimulation of the adrenal axis which leads to tachycardia rise in blood pressure a metabolic syndrome like picture and uh, similarly uh, there is a rise in tsh levels even though the t3 t4 levels might be normal now what is the result in a tissue so if there is excessive hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis stimulation there will be beta adrenergic stimulation in the tissues there will be increased neutrophilia there will be increased uh, destruction of the collagen fibers and uh, that would lead to aneurysm like structures the uh, neutrophilic infiltrate of the structures and uh, this kind of picture is common in ulcerative colitis in aneurysms when the adrenal axis degenerates and the there's still a high amount of stimulation coming from the hypothalamus high signaling i would say uh, there will be alpha adrenergic stimulation because of the thyroid axis what will that result in that will result in a lymphocytic infiltration of the tissues along with increased collagen deposition and increased elastin de degeneration so the blood vessels will become stiffer they will be more predisposed to problems like dissection of the aorta and an example would be uh, like thromboangitis obliterans as we know from smoking so smoking is a sympathetic stimuli and it causes alpha adrenergic stimulation of the tissues causing thrombosis as well as increased collagen deposition and uh, there is lymphocytic infiltration of the blood vessels so the nervi vasorum and the enteric nervous system they basically transfer those signals to the media and the intima now the intim uh, the innermost layer of the nervi vasorum and the enteric nervous system as i said the the main function was to supply the mucosa or the intima and release certain uh, signals like nitric oxide which are important for the for the normal functioning of the intima for the normal healthy structure and it is basically parasympathetic in nature while the uh, outer layer is mostly sympathetic in function so if there is excessive sympathetic stimulation the layer supplying the intima there will be less parasympathetic stimulation less nitric oxide release and it will lead to early degeneration leading to atherosclerosis and if there is excessive sympathetic stimulation in the media region there will be destruction of the elastin and increased deposition of the collagen which will result in arteriosclerosis like picture 
so uh, this is how the autonomic nervous system interacts with the endocrine system so the alpha adrenergic and beta adrenergic receptors have different presentation on the blood vessels similarly congenital defects as coarctation of aorta now i see there is a there are quite a number of similarities between coarctation of aorta and duodenal atresia or even hirschsprung's disease that there is a post stenotic dilatation in that region uh, the prognosis of the disease is dependent upon how early do you diagnose it and treat it the later the uh, diagnosis and treatment the later the poorer the results the outcome of the uh, treatment so i see that since uh, hirschsprung's disease or duodenal atresia is a ganglionic or post ganglionic uh, lesion which leads to decreased functioning of the uh, tunica media or the uh, muscular layer of the intestine it is the same in coarctation of aorta and uh, there is a post stenotic dilatation plus there is a decreased movement in the blood vessels uh, as we see in the doppler studies post lesion so uh, what you can uh, compare the doppler studies with the manometry studies in the gastrointestinal system i would like to come to the calcification dystrophic calcification of arterial tissues as well as uh, the intestines so uh, we have a, examples of porcelain aorta and uh, of porcelain gallbladder so uh, why does this happen so uh, there are certain chemicals which are secreted in by the intima or the mucosal layer which prevent calcification of the tissues when there is denervation of these tissues as a result of aging or due to injury or for any uh, reason these tissues are predisposed to develop calcification of alpha adrenergic nature 